Ladies and gentlemen, the anchor for Team Beatles, please welcome John Fugleson! Where to begin? Um, you fucking Philistines, let's start. First off, Karen, what a pleasure. That, that intro for a band you never heard of before today. We're on the same team, and I will tell you, I have not seen an Asian female multimedia performance artist add to a group like that since I can't think of anything. <laughs> There's a fucking flute on Hey, You've Gotta Hide Your Love Away. <laughs> McCartney plays multiple recorders on Fool in the Hill, okay? Just put that shit to bed with your corner. Right. No, By the way, I'm glad we talked about Jethro Tull. Are there any millennials left after the Jethro Tull conversation? <laughs> You're welcome. It went, Carmen, you got it wrong. The Stones did get their blood changed in Switzerland, but all the old blood went into Keith. That's what happened. Now, um, Couple things. First off, I, I'm excited. This is thrilling for me. I feel like Ringo. I'm just glad to be here. But, um... <laughs> in defense of Ringo, he hasn't done Thomas the Tank since the 80s. Coincidentally, the last decade the Stones had a chart hit, so keep that in mind. Um, it's just a fact. I love the Stones. I'm gonna get to that in a second. And Ringo, for the last 30 years, has had Ringo Starr's All-Star Band, where all kinds of great musicians have been able to play to 5,000 seat rooms. He has kept Peter Frampton and Mark Farr of Grand Front from selling bone marrow on Craigslist. Ringo has done this. And Mick, Mick at 75 years old with a two and a half year old child, a girl, which means in 14 years she'll be old enough for Ronnie Wood to hit on her. Let's get started. Um, I apologize, I have a cold, so I'm on so many drugs, I'm a donor match for Keith Richards, but uh, I wish you'd chosen something less volatile for the show, like Israel and Palestine. But let's get started. This is, this, welcome to Let It Be versus Let It Bleed, and I want to tell you something. I've done a lot of these Uptown showdowns, I've never done one as evil as this. This is an evil thing to make people do, and it's my first time I've been invited to partake in evil. This is the Sophie's Choice of the world's two greatest bands, all right? Don't force nice people to have to make a horrible, it's like you're making, it's like, it's like we're having to do fuck, marry, kill with the Trump administration. You don't do it. Now, I do have personal connections. I, I, I did George's last TV interview. I've worked with Paul a couple times. I've seen Keith running around the city. Uh, I played pool with Ronnie when I was 20 at Googie's on Celibate Street. Anyone remember Googie? Uh, I've met Yoko. I interviewed the Stones. Julian and Sean have done my show. I handed Ringo a glance of water once. I love the Stones. Uh, in a 2004 interview with GQ magazine, presidential nominee John Kerry was asked this very question, Beals versus Stones. John Kerry couldn't give a clean answer. Don't be like John Kerry. Now, I'm not trying to besmirch the man, but as a candidate, you know he was Clark Kent without a phone booth. I'm not here to beat him up. I'm here to help you handle a trifling fool in your life who would throw this heretical inquiry in your Beatles or Stones, which, fuck that question, it's evil. But I came here wanting to be the Khaleesi. I'm gonna break the wheel. No more Starks and Lannister, no more Sith and Jedi. No, you cannot do this, but then they told me this is my job, so I'm gonna defend the Beatles. Um, and both bands, both bands are British, both bands grew up loving American R&B, both bands have members who could repel syphilis. Um, I, I'm not gonna be one of these people bad-mouthing the Stones. I love the Stones. In fact, I, what I love every year when they release another two-disc hits package, they always put all the songs in different order, which shows how much they care about the fans. Because they can't remember what the order was the last okay, time. Okay, the Beatles are better. We're just here to shuffle around and do this process. You guys know it. Many bands have tried to top, have tried to copy the Beatles, but only the Rolling Stones have been copying the Rolling Stones for the last 35 years. Um, now, I usually rank best by who did LSD first, but let's go by numbers. 55 years ago this week, brothers and sisters, the Beatles occupied all top five positions on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. They sold over a billion records. The most number one albums in the British album charts, 15, 17 number one hits, 20 number one hits in the US, 24 consecutive top 10 hits. Yesterday is the most covered song of all time. Ray Charles' version is beautiful. Uh, 72 songs on the US. West Billboard chart. First band to have three double albums hit number one in the same year, and that happened 26 years after they broke up. 
even the worst Beatles albums are great, but the worst Stone albums are very, not very good. The Beatles <laughs> wrote virtually all their own material. The Stones' second album is 90% covers, and it's called Rolling Stones No. 2. <laughs> uh, the two best-selling vinyl LPs in 2017 overall, Pepper and Abbey Road, no Stones album charted. But these are, these are just numbers, and numbers can lie. Um, popularity alone doesn't make you better, okay? Donald Trump got more votes than Hillary Clinton, and he- no, fuck, he did That's the wrong one. So. All right, so the, the Beatles started everything. All that is rock came from them. It's like a, the Big Bang versus a Bigger Bang. No one remembers the Rolling Stones' the last album of original material, The Bigger Bang, 2005? I can go home now. Um, if there's no Beatles, there's no Rolling Stones. They, they, they didn't just write the rules, they wrote the Stones' first charting single, a song they gave to Ringo. Uh, I Want to Be Your Man, John and Paul knocked it off in less than two minutes, said, you can use that. Lennon later remarked, we weren't going to give them anything great, right? And a minor ditty created for Ringo became the Stones' first song, and the Beatles made all the royalties off it. The Beatles invented modern rock, from the stadium show to the music video, first to print lyrics on an album, to the concept album, to bands starting labels. The Stones were not innovators like the Beatles. Stones made great rock with each album. Beatles changed what rock could be with each album. Helter Skelter and I Want You, She's So Heavy are considered the first two heavy metal songs. First band to ever have a single with two A-sides. If there's, Stones have a better logo. I'm, I'm gonna give you that. I love it. <laughs> the Beatles have the two greatest songwriters in rock history, and George is a great writer. George did the best solo album of any Beatle or Stone. This book did I Want to Hold Your Hand, and within three years, they're doing Strawberry Fields Forever and Day in the Life. Hey Jude and Revolution are on the same fucking single, and here's a quote, the Beatles were the first to actually find that middle path between the artistic and the intellectual, and at the same time still be on the street. That would be Keith Richards said that. I can go home now. Um, he was so strung out when he said that. He didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, I will grant you, Paul McCartney's Wonderful Christmas Time sounds like two Casio keyboards fucking. I agree. <laughs> but it's a classic. He makes 500,000 pounds a year on it, so God bless him. It, 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 Bob Dylan gave his, got the Beatles high the first time. They met Elvis. Here, here's what it is. And this is a big thing. Um, a few weeks ago, Mick Jagger's name was trending on Twitter. You saw it, we saw it, we all thought the same thing. Oh my God, I hope it's not a solo record. We all thought it. <laughs> Fortunately, it was just heart disease and he's gonna be okay. The Beatles invented the solo career. They invented it. Plastic Odo Band, imagine all things must pass. Band on the run, living in the material world. Ram versus Primitive Cool. The soundtrack to the remake of Alfie with Jude Law? Uh, Got Us in the Doorway? Mix album, which even Keith called uh, dog shit in the doorway? Uh, there was that. The Beatles had more places to go by being the less threatening ones. They could threaten. Like, Andrew Oldham, the Stones boss, he wanted to have the scary Beatles. The, Be the Beatles that would scare the parents. He wanted it to be uh, the benchmark, and he said the Stones came to be portrayed as dangerous, dirty, and degenerate. And I encouraged my charges to be as nasty as they wished to be. When you're already being nasty, you can't go anywhere with that. At Altamont, Mick saying, painful, we've got to love each other. It's like, fuck you, Mick, you don't talk love. But the Beatles could talk love and then inspire families from the Gallaghers to the fucking Mansons. Sympathy for the devil, but John said he was bigger than Jesus. Paul's been banned by the BBC three times. Oh, but Mick wore low-cut skinny jeans. Ooh. <laughs> Here's some mitigating circumstances, okay? Was, oh, the Beatles weren't a great touring band, just girls screaming, girls screaming. You don't think about girls screaming at a Beatles show, it drowns out the sound of no one being stabbed by Hells Angels bikers at a Beatles show. Never happened once. I'll give the Stones credit, they were the only rock band, the only rock band that could navigate disco and come out the other side. No one else did it. Neil Young fucking disappeared. Lennon tried to do disco, and it says cocaine and saxophones. Bob Dylan, he had to be a boarding in Christian. It destroyed him, so the Stones get credit for that. The Beatles would have toured through the 70s. They could have done it. They could have gone out with Billy Preston and cocaine and gotten along just fine. But here's Here's the deal. There's so many reasons why the Beatles are better. You guys know it. And the Stones are great. We love them. And I, I, I didn't want it to come to this. So here, here's a few mitigating circumstances as well. Uh, 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 Paul had a kid in his 60s. He did have a child in his 60s with Heather Mills, also known as Peg Legono. Um, <laughs> I met Yoko and she actually accused Heather Mills of breaking up Paul's solo career. Uh, I 
waited 15 years to tell that joke on stage. So people would get it. I got to come here, the Upper West Side, for people who would get that fucking joke. Thank you. Uh, Mick Jagger did Duck Face first, but only because he's been around longer than ducks. Um, <laughs> Let's see, oh, oh finally, uh, the, oh, yeah, the Beatles, you know, fuck you for saying, fuck you, you're brilliant, Excuse but fuck me. you for saying, for saying, oh, here's the greatest song from the White Album, and you play Oh Blood, Oh Blood, Helter Skelter, motherfucker, okay? When you turn on Charles Manson, you're scarier than the Rolling. The Beatles' last album, Abbey Road, has a children's song about a serial killer who uses hammers. They're the badass band, and, and, and Tull is millennial repellent. Um... <laughs> This. I didn't want to have to go this far in this debate, but y'all pushed me too far, and Carolyn's a beast. I gotta do this before she gets up here. I didn't want to go this far, but here we're gonna go. The category that matters solo member duets with David Bowie. Oh, shit. Uh huh. John Lennon did a duet of a song he wrote with Bowie called Fame. Anybody remember what Mick Jagger did with David Bowie? Dancing in the Streets, the remake, I Can Go Home. But wait, we're almost done. Uh, yeah, serious, Dancing in the Streets with him. Um, so it, finally, in closing, here, here's the difference. The Stones sang about me and you and her. Beatles sang about all of us. Beatles sang about love. And the Stones don't have to. They're great with what they do. But right now is a time when we need hope more than ever and when we need love more than ever. And the Beatles wrote love songs, and not just love songs, they wrote love songs about their wives. Paul wrote, wrote uh, Long and Winding Road and My Love for Linda. And John wrote Jealous Guy for Yoko. Uh, George wrote Something for Patty. And then Clapton wrote Layla and Wonderful Tonight for Patty. I mean, <laughs> like the Beatles wrote love songs for their wives that became classics. What's the most romantic song the Stones ever wrote? Angie, about fucking David Bowie's wife. <laughs> Not quite the same. We could talk about the movies. You can compare Hard Day's Night, the best rock and roll movie ever, uh, versus Cocksucker Blues. Anyone know Cocksucker Blues by the Stones? No, they don't have DHS anymore. Um, Ed Sullivan, 74 million. The Beatles would not play the segregated houses. So if you don't pick the Beatles, you're in favor of segregation. Um, the rooftop concert. And finally, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you with this. Uh, uh, my child uh, is is a Beatles in first grade. I held up a dollar. I, I said, who's that? He said, George. I said, George who? He said, George Harrison. I let him keep the fucking dollar. And so when evil people like the formerly good people at this show come and say, Beatles are stones, Beatles are stones, here's the answer. And I'm going to tell this to you in exchange for you letting Beatles win. Um, here's your answer every time when someone pulls this shit. You say this. Beatles Studio Stones Live. Beatles Studio, Stones Live. You will win every debate on this. It's the truth, you get to have it both ways, it shows you know what you're talking about, and it will allow you to discuss those 700 live versions of satisfaction. I yield the floor! <laughs>